to Lawrence Opper. Thank you. All right, well, good morning. Uh, it's so always great to be here with the Safety Council. Um, I, I really appreciate them uh, when they asked me to come and present. It gives me an opportunity to, to use this as a springboard to get our message out when it comes to safety with the patrol, as well as uh, with the Safety Council. Uh, if you were with us last time I presented, it was uh, back in May. I presented on uh, the Below 100 initiative, which is basically the 100 days of summer that start between uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day. And I did a presentation on that. We talked about uh, the numbers. I just want to give a quick update before we start with uh, the alcohol or the DUI presentation. Um, if, in case you were wondering, back in 2022, so last year, during the 100 uh, deadliest days, we had 98 fatalities. Uh, 98 people died on the roads uh, last in 2022. Uh, this year, we had 82. So a difference of 16, which is great, um, but still, that's 82 people that uh, that died that that didn't. I mean, I shouldn't say didn't have to, but but if you think about crashes and how they're preventable, uh, 82. That's 82 more than what was what was necessary, what we needed. We we want zero, obviously, um, but uh, it's a good trend. We're going down. Uh, hopefully, next year during the 100 deadliest days. Uh, we'll see that number of 82 go even further lower, uh, further lower. That's not right. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll see it go down. That's that's the goal. That's what we're looking for. <clears throat> All right. So what I want to do is talk about um, DUIs in the workplace. Um, before we get into the nuts and bolts of it, though, I want to talk about some uh, work. There we go. OK, I want to talk about some numbers and statistics. So these numbers come from uh, 2022, so last year. Obviously, we don't have our numbers for 2023 yet. Um, but uh, in 2022, throughout the entire state of Utah, so not just the Highway Patrol, but all law enforcement agencies, uh, we made 10,413 DUI arrests. Uh, that's quite the number. Um, that's pretty high. But if you look at it, the previous year, uh, that's 206 less than uh, what we arrested in 2021. And so as before I go any further, let me, let me address, if you have any questions or comments, uh, throw it on and I'll address it immediately. Um, might as well talk about it when we're talking about the topic rather than having to go back. So I was gonna answer that question for, uh, for Mike. And so I apologize, but so let's go back. Um, 206 less than, uh, than, the previous year, which tells me one of two things, either uh, the message is getting out, which is what I'm hoping is that, uh, you know, we have zero tolerance when it comes to DUIs. Uh, we are going to be out there. We're going to be out there enforcing. We're going to make arrests and hopefully people are getting the message that, hey, if I do drink, maybe I shouldn't be driving. Uh, that That's a good, a good sign that uh, uh, we're doing less. Hopefully that's because there's less DUIs out there. And this number indicates a 10 year decline in DUI arrests. From 2013 all the way up to 2022, there's been a 27% decline in uh, DUI arrests. Uh, to give you the numbers, back in 2013, we had 12,227 people arrested. And then uh, obviously the number there, just to reiterate, 10,413. So we're, I, and I wish I could tell you why those numbers have decreased. Like I said, I hope it's because people get the message. Um, might be because there's less law enforcement now, and maybe there's not a decrease in DUIs. I mean, who knows? But uh, really, I like to think that it's because the message is getting out. Uh, of those 10,413, they broke it down as 74% uh, of them were male that were arrested. 24% uh, were female, and then 2% were uh, unspecified. Um, so just an idea of the numbers there. Next thing, BAC. What are we talking about? Let me throw it out to the people in the room here. What does BAC stand for? Does anybody here know? Pretty easy, right? Blood alcohol content. That's what we're looking for when we make a DUI arrest. We're trying to see what amount of alcohol is in the person's blood. What's the legal 
amount for uh, a DUI here in Utah? 0 0.05. 0 0.05. <laughs> okay. That law has changed uh, back in 2017, which when I was putting this together, it was kind of a shock that it was that long ago. It feels like that law just barely changed. Um, but back in 2017, the legislators here in Utah have changed the BAC level to be 0 0.05. And to give you a little history of, of the blood alcohol levels, back a long, long time ago, nationwide, the BAC limit was 0 0.10. <clears throat> then it changed to 0 0.08. Any idea what state was the first one to change it to 0 0.08? Utah, yeah. Uh, and all the, the, everyone in the nation, you know, all the other states, they kind of laughed, oh, 0 0.08, that's ridiculous. But everybody started paying attention to what would happen here in Utah when it went down to 0 0.08. And who followed suit? All 49 other states. They saw that things were going well with the 0 0.08. And so as a nation, it was changed to 0 0.08. Who's the first state to change to 0 0.05? Utah. Uh, go figure, right? So I guarantee you that the entire nation is watching to see what happens with the 0 0.05 now, now that we've done this here in uh, the state of Utah. Uh, so of those tested, so now that we're talking about BAC, I'm um, giving you a little history of, uh, of how we got to 0 0.05. Of those tested in 2022, you know, the 10,413 people that were tested, we had 41% had a BAC of 0.15 or greater. 41, almost half were three times over the limit. Uh, that's ridiculous. Um, it makes my job easy because when you're 0.15 over the limit or when you're having a BAC of 0.15, really simple for me to tell if you're impaired or not. Um, but that number is, uh, that's, that's ridiculous. Uh, what percentage of uh, drivers were 0 0.05 or between 0 0.05 and, uh, and uh, 0 0.0, let's see, I think I put 0 0.05. Let's just do the number. <laughs> Let's just do that. 0 0.05 to 0 0.08. 8%. Now, how many of you would have thought that if we make that change to 0 0.05, there's going to be a ton more DUI arrests that were made? Logic would say that, right? But in reality, that's not the case. There's just been 0 0.08 where 0 0.05 to 0 0.08. So what does that tell you about DUIs? People are drinking People are hammered. Uh, that's that's what it tells you. Um, and and the average BAC that we find throughout the state, what do you think it is? 0. 0.2? Whoa, that is high. 0. 0.02? <laughs> what do you think it is? 0. 0.1, there's another number there. Average BAC is 0.14%. Uh, so mathematicians, that's almost three times the limit, right? The highest BAC that I came across in my career, 0.398. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was coherent. He was able to do my test. He wasn't good at them, but he was able to do my test. What does that tell you about this person? If he's a 0 0.398, yeah, he's, he's a career alcoholic, right? And when I came across him, that was his fourth DUI that he got. My, my DUI was his fourth. 0.398. That is ridiculous. Do you have a question? I do have a question. So if I'm adding those two right, so that's 49% of those two. So of the rest of the 51%, is that? Greater than 0. 0.15. Greater than 0. 0.15. So, so, no, I'm sorry. So between 0. 0.08 oh, and 0. 0.15. 08. Yeah, the rest of it's going to be 0.15, which makes sense because there's your average, right? 0.14. So, uh, yeah. All right. So that gives you a little history of alcohol and, and, and DUIs and what we're looking for and all that kind of stuff. So let's talk about issues with DUIs and the workplace. So I'll pose a question. What is the most dangerous part of the workday for an employee? Yeah, it's your commute, right? 
it's your work, your commute to and from your 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 workplace, right? Uh, when COVID hit, that wasn't the case necessarily. Um, in fact, it was it was kind of ironic. In all my 18 years, I've never been told to not make traffic stops until COVID hit. And we were told, do not do proactive work. It's going to be more reactive. Unless, of course, there's something ridiculous that, that we observed. But it wasn't nearly as proactive as it is now or how it was before. But you're absolutely right. Your drive to and from work is going to be the most dangerous part of, of your work day. So uh, some issues with DUI in the workplace. You can probably think of some. Uh, let's, let's say hypothetically uh, yourself or one of your employees uh, gets a DUI. Uh, it can be either on a personal level, like on their time off when they're, they're not at work, or when they are working and, and they're driving a, a, a company vehicle. Uh, what are some of the issues that uh, you're going to run into with this employee? First one is going to be a suspended license. Uh, if you have an employee that is driving for you, are they able to drive with a suspended license? No, they can't. Uh, now, that doesn't stop people. Um, but if I were to stop a vehicle that the driver has a suspended license, can I impound the vehicle? Absolutely. There's no licensed driver with that vehicle. And so I can't let him drive because then I'm promoting him. You know, I'm encouraging him to break the law. I can't do that. So I could impound the vehicle. If that's a company vehicle, is that going to cause more problems for you as a company? Yeah, of course. And you have the tow fees, you have the impound fees, all these things that you're going to have to pay for to get your company vehicle out. And that's just going to be a, a headache. So uh, time out suspended license. A driver's license could be suspended for 120 days, so up to four months for a first conviction of DUI and two years for each subsequent conviction. Then if the driver refuses the chemical test, their license could be suspended for 18 months for a first refusal, and then three years for each subsequent uh, refusal. This last one with the refusal, uh, <clears throat> when we sign our paperwork saying that we are willing to accept a driver's license from the, the state of Utah, we also submit, or we also sign a piece of paper that says we will submit to a chemical test if requested by law enforcement. So if you get pulled over for a DUI, uh, it, is, um, you, it is your, you know, you sign the contract, I guess is a good way to put it, that if I request a chemical test, you will submit to it. Now you have the option to not submit to it, but if you choose not to, there's the ramifications. 18 months suspension for the first time it happens, and then three years uh, every time after that. So I want you to think about your employees. Uh, if they get arrested for a DUI, uh, you got some suspensions coming and that's gonna make it really tough for, for them to drive for you, uh, which makes your job a lot more difficult. So that's one thing you gotta worry about is suspended license. Another thing you gotta worry about is time off for court and jail. Uh, because if you think about it, once you get arrested or once your employee gets arrested, uh, there's the five, six hours uh, in jail that they, they would spend from the initial arrest. Uh, what they do is they, they hold you at the jail until you are no longer a danger to yourself or somebody else. And so basically the way that means is uh, you need to sober up before you get released. And, and usually that takes about five hours or so. Because uh, the jail is not going to release you if you're going to hurt yourself or somebody else, because then who's responsible for that? The jail, right? I mean, they can go back and say, well, uh, the, the victims of, of someone who gets hit by a, someone who's impaired, they can say that, uh, well, the jail released them while they were still impaired, and the jail is not going to take that, uh, that kind of uh, uh, responsibility. And so they would say, stay in jail for about five hours, six hours, however long it takes for them to uh, sober up. <clears throat> so you got the jail time after the, the arrest. Uh, they might have to take a full day off for court. And it's just not one day. Court proceedings usually take about four different days because you have your arraignment, you have your preliminary hearing, 
you have your trial. Uh, if you choose to get, if, you, if you're found guilty uh, or you plead guilty, then there's a sentencing. That could be another day. All these take time away from work, uh, work that could be done by, by them if they were there. And so how much are you losing by losing product, production from somebody who's going to court for a DUI trial? And then there's a jail time. If they get convicted, um, they could spend anywhere from zero to 180 days in jail. How many months is 180 days? Six months, right? So almost a half year uh, in jail if, uh, if they're convicted. So you got your suspended license, you got your time off. Uh, those two things are a concern for you as an employer if uh, your employee gets arrested for a DUI. Next one is going to be insurance premiums. Uh, insurance premiums are gonna raise. Uh, every company needs to be insured. And uh, we all know that insurance companies don't like it when those that are insured get DUIs. And so uh, each insurance company is different, but numbers will show that insurance premiums could raise anywhere from 40 to 90% uh, after a DUI arrest. The bottom line, everybody is here to make money, right? I mean, that's why we're in business is to make money. How is this doing that? Uh, it's, it's, it's the opposite, right? And so uh, insurance premiums will, will certainly raise. Then another thing you got to be concerned about is the damage to your business reputation. Uh, and and I, I, I tried to find uh, articles with headlines that had certain businesses that uh, where their employees were arrested for DUI and, and you know, tried to look into it. Uh, unfortunately, and it's kind of embarrassing, I couldn't find private companies, but I sure found a lot of public entities. For instance, uh, Salt Lake City Councilwoman arrested on suspicion of DUI in Springville. Um, if you're familiar with this one, that was uh, about six months ago. Um, she resigned her, her post as a councilwoman and uh, she's dealing with that. BYU receiver pleads guilty to reduce charges in a DUI case. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. I'm not a fan of the school <laughs> down south. And so it uh, wasn't, wasn't a shock when I read that one. Football receiver. Football, sure, yeah, football. Okay, how about this one? Everybody's familiar with this one, right? KUTV News anchor cited for investigation of DUI. Uh, unfortunately, that was not the first one. Uh, there's been a couple for this particular news anchor person. Um, and then the one that's really embarrassing for me, XUHP trooper pleads guilty for DUI. Does that have any effect on me? Oh, absolutely it does. Uh, this one in particular, they were in charge of the DUI squad for the state of Utah. They were the lieutenant over the DUI squad and they were arrested for DUI. Uh, they crashed their unmarked patrol car. And uh, during the investigation, it was discovered that they were impaired and uh, very embarrassing. For, for the city, for, for the highway patrol. The unfortunate thing is that is not the only one I can tell you about. In my 18 years, I can tell you of at least four troopers that have, uh, that have been arrested for DUI. Um, how do you get away from that? I mean, how do you know, everybody is familiar with the, uh, the video. Don't tase me, bro, right? Remember that? Don't tase me. I wasn't part of it. But I sure heard it whenever I had an altercation with someone. That's the first thing they went to. What are you going to do? You're going to tase me now? No, I'm not going to tase you. But can we get away from this? No. As a company, if your employee gets into a, a, a wreck and they're impaired, do you think people are going to be talking about that? Do you think people are going to say, oh, well, uh, somebody driving a, a Sinclair truck um, crashed into my nephew and and now he's he's crippled and you think that's going to come out yeah people are going to talk and so 
it does damage to your business reputation. So all four of these things, uh, suspended license, uh, time off for court, insurance premiums, and then the damage that it does to your business's reputation, all those affect what? What's that? Oh, that, he was saying hello. What do you think that affects? Your, your bottom line, your, your, your money-making abilities, right? And, and going back to what I said earlier, is that not what we're in the business for, is to make a profit, uh, to, to make money? I mean, we, we provide a service, of course, and, and I'm sure that everybody's excited to do that. But in the end, why do we wake up in the morning and go to work? It's for the paycheck, it's to make money, yeah. How is this helping? It's not. So uh, this is a question for uh, folks at home or folks at home, folks uh, in, in internet world. Do you have a company policy that addresses what the course of action is if an employee gets arrested for a DUI while on the clock? Um, if you can actually, I'm curious what some people might know. Uh, can you take some time to type something in quickly and let me know uh, right now, if anyone can tell me if they have a policy, what would that policy be? What's your course of action? I'll give you some time to, or is everybody asleep? Anything? Let me, let me throw it out. Is it an immediate termination? Uh, cause I can tell you with the highway patrol, it is an immediate termination. Um, they'll do their investigation. Uh, they'll, they'll be put on administrative leave, but, uh, of those four that I talked about, none of them came back. Uh, none of them were able to come back to patrol and, and, and that kind of makes sense. I mean, if we're our bread and butter in the highway patrol is DUI enforcement. And if we got people that are out there drinking and driving, uh, then um, yeah, that's not going to work for us. And so they they have been terminated and no longer with us. So I'm just curious, does anybody have any policy? Because if you don't, or if you don't know it, uh, if if you're a manager, it might be a good idea to get familiar with that with what that policy is. Uh, if you don't have a policy, I'm going to make this offer to you. Uh, I spent four and a half years at the Highway Safety Office. Uh, working on the DUI campaign, the drive sober, get pulled over campaign. Uh, I was the one that managed it for the four and a half years, um, set up checkpoints, set up saturation, set up uh, media events, all these things that I did. And one of those things was, that we did was we helped companies that didn't have a policy get a policy in place. And so take a look at your policy, your company policy. If you don't have a policy, uh, get in touch with Mike or, or John, and uh, they'll get in touch with me, and I'll work on putting one together for you. We'll work together, figure out what policy would be best for you when it comes to DUIs, because if you don't have one, you need to have one. Uh, because if something were to happen, and they say, well, there's no policy, so you can't, you can't take any kind of uh, uh, disciplinary action on me, then... What, what are you going to be able to say? Well, I guess there isn't one. So take a look. And uh, if you don't have one and you would like to help putting one together, uh, get in touch with us and we'll make sure that that happens for you. So this is uh, getting a DUI while on the clock. Oh, wrong number. Do you have a policy about uh, if one of your employees uh, gets a DUI on their personal time? Um, if you do, if you don't, I mean, something to look at. But in the end, does it still affect your business even if they get a DUI on their personal time? Yeah, absolutely it does. We just talked about it. All those different things, the suspended license, the time off in court, uh, insurance premiums could be raised, the, uh, the effect that it has on your business and your image. So something to think about. Take a look at your policy and procedure. If you have one, uh, fantastic. Uh, if you have one, it needs to be updated consider doing that. If you don't have one, contact us and we'll certainly help you get a policy put into place. Okay. Uh, last thing, if you are in a position to hire people, 
uh, I highly recommend that you stay away from this person. We hit play. Yes. Level 36 dispatch. Go ahead. Uh, 44, the Skyjack. Uh, we'll be at uh, 680 North Edgeville Road. White mill, black coveralls, ball cap. White t-shirt. Sir, pull that lift to the side of the road. Stop. Now. Yeah. Oh. 443. What the heck are you doing out here? 43, I'm working a job site right there, man. 45, Right down there. What are you doing down there? What are you doing in this thing? I just came to get uh, some lunch and sodas and whatnot for the guys. What? What's your name? Steve. Well, Steve, I can't have you driving up and down the street in this skyjack. I, you're sitting on beer. That's for after. I'm not drinking it now. What about that beer there I saw you drinking coming out of the driveway? 49 oh, man. I'm just finishing that one was from earlier. That's... Steve, I, I can't have you driving down the road in a man. skyjack drinking beer. Come why don't, you, on, why don't you come on down and talk to me here for a minute? Let's figure this oh, out. Man, I got to get back to work. No, nah, just come on down. We'll get this figured out and we'll oh, get you man. back to work. No. Steve, come on down. No. Steve. Come on come, down. Come get me. How about that? I tell you okay. what, Steve. Get we can do there. this the easy way, or we can do it the hard way. Come on up. The buddy. hard way on the way to jail. We're gonna stop by the hospital. Oh, maybe I'll come down. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll come Nine, down. Nine, seven. Maybe I won't. Nine, Steve. Ninety-seven. Come get me. Come on down. Just come on down. Let's work this out. Get you back to work. Oh man, why don't you just go on your way, and I'll go on my way. I'm giving you one more chance, Steve. Come on down the easy uh, way. I know my rights. All right, you want to play it the hard way? I pay your salary. You want to play it the hard way? I pay your salary. I pay your salary. How do you like that? Are you going to come down or are we going to bring you down, Steve? Ma'am, why don't you do your dangest? Go ahead. 751. What are you doing, man? What are you... I know my right. I'm, I'm two blocks from my work. Put that cigarette down. Put your cigarette down. He doesn't have anybody right now. Want me to come in or you want to come over here? Hey, whatever you got. Come on, man. I didn't. God dang it, dude. Now stop resisting. Man. Stop resisting. Don't fuck up my beer now. Hey. Could have, we could have did this the easy way, but no, you had to do it the hard way, so. Oh, my boss. He said it was cool. Call my boss down there. He said it was cool. Come on, man. I know my right. Dang it, dude. It's just a fucking scissor lift, man. So my, my favorite part of that is I go up, I can go down. I can go up, I can go down. So stay away from him or stay away from this guy. Level 36 dispatch. Go ahead. Was it the same video? Okay, here we go. Okay, there we go. Well, this is one. Stay away from this guy. 4800 dispatch. I'm a 10 8 off that last stop. Dispatch SF6. Oh man, not this guy. Dude. I need to go right to the hospital. Stick with this chair. 4800 dispatch. Be out with a white male. Uh, old Munson Road. Riding a lawnmower, looks like a PSB signal, 98. Pull it over, Steve. Stop the lawnmower. Back SF1. I have a town over the hill. Hey! Stop. Hey, man, turn the lawnmower off! Come on, man. Steve! Right. How many times I got to tell you you can't be driving down the, the, the road drinking on a lawnmower? 35 I'm just going down to the oyster shack, man. Come on. Well, that, throw, put your cigarette out, man. 39. Put your, put Can your, I finish it? Put your cigarette out. Step off. God dang it, man. Go 
Your tow truck just passed the on. Pour your whiskey out. I just got this. Pour it out. 95.49. I'm just going down to the oyster shack, man. Pour it out now. You know what, man? Pour I, you know. I'm not doing anything wrong. I know my rights. No, I'm not going to jail today. I'm not down. Man, put, I'm not, man, put your hand behind your back. No, no. Put your hand. Uh-uh. Steve. No, I'm not, do, I'm not hey, doing anything you, wrong. Hey, you're fixing to get lit up, Steve. No. Steve, you're fixing no. to get tased. I didn't do it. I'm serious, Steve. Steve. No. Come on, man. No. Come on, bro. No. Come on. I'm not going to. Ah! Uh, I think I crapped my pants. Oh, God, don't do that again. Please. Jesus Christ, man. I told you, man. I didn't do it. I told you. I told you. I'm, you you ready to get up? You go get up nice and slow, you hear me? God. I know my right. Come on. I told you. I know. God but, damn it. God. Yeah, uh, same guy. I don't know if you picked up on that. But uh, in fact, we were talking about uh, Florida before this whole thing. That was in Florida. Go figure, right? Go figure. All right. So heads up. If Steve comes in your door uh, with a job application, just let him go. You know, it's, it's not worth it to you because uh, who knows what could happen with, uh, with Steve on your payroll. Uh, that should do it. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm very passionate about DUI enforcement. Um, I don't know if it's, uh, it's just that, like I said, that's our bread and butter when it comes to the highway patrol. I don't know if it's uh, the, the four and a half years I spent dedicated to DUI enforcement with the highway safety office, but it's a, it's a serious issue and uh, it's 100% preventable. And uh, since it is 100% preventable, I'm not sure why people still do it. Um, even though we do have a decline, I, I like that, but uh, it's still happening all over the place. And as an employer, uh, you don't want that being a part of your company. And so something to think about. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. If not, I appreciate your time and I hope you have a great day. Thank you I do have a question right yes. there. So, go back. so just one question I had for Lawrence was, what are the most prevalent like times, dates, and locations as far as DUI? So great, great question. Uh, obviously it's gonna be in the evening. Um, uh, final call is, uh, last call is, you know, around what, midnight, one o'clock. Um, but uh, we, we found that uh, it can be at any time. Um, usually alcohol DUIs are prevalent in the evening and drug DUIs are prevalent in the morning. And that's because uh, unless they were planning on drinking all night long, they've had time to burn it off and in the mornings they're fine. But we see a lot of drug DUIs in the morning and alcohol in the evening. Um, locations for me, uh, when, I was, uh, when I was on the road, um, I loved going out to Magna. Uh, there were four bars in a space or five bars in a space of four blocks. And so uh, Magna was just a DUI heaven for me. Um, but but we see it all throughout the entire state, obviously. It um, doesn't matter where you are, you're going to find them. So good question. And any particular like, holidays? Because like I'm a 30 year old man. I don't know if you guys can tell that with me standing next to Lawrence or not. Yeah. But I still get texts from my mom to every Halloween, New Year's. Like there's going to be DUIs to get off the roads tonight. So interestingly enough, a lot of times people think that New Year's Eve is going to be the busiest one. And, and once upon a time, it was busy for us. But I think it's with all the, the education that we put out there, all the enforcement, uh, people know that we're going to be out there on New Year's Eve. And so people have started making plans for their New Year's Eve parties to if they, if they drink, then they're not going to be driving. And so New Year's Eve has actually gone down as far as a, a busy holiday for us. Uh, now it's, it's Halloween. That's a really big one for us. So that's coming up. I'm super excited about that. Um, Halloween. And then believe it or not, the 4th of July is a really busy one for us as well. 
uh, which kind of makes sense, right? You're at your barbecue, you're at your friend's house, your family, you're cracking up open the beers, you're having a good time and fireworks, and then you drive home. So 4th of July is starting to be a big one for us too. All right, perfect. Thank you. Great. Are there any questions from anyone here or chat? I have a question. Okay. Uh, do you ever find like reasons as to why people say that they did drive under the influence? Sure. Like, were there reasons that they gave as to why they had to or that they did? What was the most common ones? Uh, they're all horrible, I, they're sure. horrible reasons, sure. but uh, I had to get my car home. Um, mm -hmm. I got to get to work tomorrow and I had to get my car home. Uh, that's a big one. Um, another one is uh, I didn't think I was that bad. I didn't think I was over the limit. Um, and, and if you think about it, alcohol affects your judgment. That's the first thing it's going to affect. So if you think you're okay to drive, you're probably not. Um, that's the alcohol speaking. Uh, and so we hear that a lot. Um, I only had one. I only had two. But with a, a BAC of 0 0.05, does it take a lot of alcohol to get to that level? No, it really doesn't. I mean, once you hit two, uh, you're more than likely going to be over the limit. And so uh, we hear that a lot. I, I or I've had people tell me that uh, they stayed at their friend's house for about four or five hours and they burned it off, but not quite. Mm -hmm. And so I hear a lot of excuses like that. Um, none of them are good. Does the state have any kind of like ride sharing resources where it's like if you are drunk, you can call someone that you get like credit for a ride or like an Uber or a Lyft or, or anything like that? Good question. The state doesn't. I know there are uh, private uh, companies that, that do have that. Um, I, when we have holidays, um, like New Year's Eve, there's a, a, a program called Tipsy Toes. If you call a tow company, they'll tow your car to, to the, uh, to your home. Uh, it might actually be the state that reimburses them. Um, I know that there's a law, uh, an attorney, a law firm that does the same thing, offers uh, free rides if you've been drinking. And so, uh, every now and then the state will be involved with it, but there isn't a program that's set up permanently for that kind of, uh, that kind of an option. Good question though. All right, any others? Any questions at home? Okay, okay. fantastic, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, we're gonna talk to Lawrence. And I hope you'll join us next month. What is interactable? Yep. For Mike Marshall, who's going to be celebrating Miner's Day on November 1st at 10 a.m. So we'll see you there next month. And if you come prepare some questions and we'll have a good time. And see you there. Stay safe, everyone.